Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. I am Rick, Mr. Negative McCone. <laughs> And we've got Pat, what's my rate, McMasters, and the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby of Century 21. How are you? How are you? We're good. We're good. Fantastic. Stay here. Thanks. Perv, yeah, still here. I know. Right? The week is zipping by fast. So I thought I'd do today. I want to start, and I want to ask each one of you individually, where do we think the real estate market's going to be over the next 90 days? I'm seeing a lot of um, articles about how bad we are versus last year. And I'm going to go over some of that now. And then, but, uh, but before we get rolling, it's like, where do you see the market as things are shaping up today over the next 90 days? So I'll start with you, Jackie. What do you think is, uh, what do you think it's going to look like? It's going to be brisk. Is it going to slow down? What do you think? What month is this? First of all, uh, I think we just hit April, yeah, I April, know. April, May, June, July. Okay. So um, I think we're going to get back to, well, in all honesty, um, unless we start getting some listings, if we see rates come down May 10th, like Barry Habib is suggesting, and I tend to believe him too, I'm on the Pat bandwagon with Barry, um, I, I'm afraid we might be in a little bit of trouble if our interest rates drop um, down. As well, and right now, FHA, VA, we are in the fives, but if we are across the board, down in the fives and we don't start build, building some inventory up, I think we're going to be in a bit of trouble. Um, I am seeing, I am having a lot of buyers that were on the fence that had leased <clears throat> homes that are reaching out and they're ready to go even at this. So unless we start picking up some inventory, I'm a little fearful. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Ruby, what do you think? Well, Jax, so I've got inventory coming for us, so hopefully that will help. A um, couple new listings coming up and a plate full of buyers. And there goes my video again. Yeah, that wouldn't be a show it. without it. <laughs> um, Jackie, anyways. Ruby comes and goes. Oops, it got <laughs> I don't know. I have a ghost on my side. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a plate full of buyers and I have um, at least three potential listings going right now. So it's hard to say. Um, I feel like we're going to kind of continue to steamroll and then probably do that soft, slow, maybe at the end of June into July. I did have somebody ask me today what I thought uh, summer was like here. He said, does it really slow down? I said, not really. Um, you know, people are getting ready to go into go to school. But Pat, uh, what what is your uh, prognosis? Uh, I mean, pretty much the same. I mean, I think we're going to be I told you a couple months ago, I think this could be a year of muddling around just muddle. I mean, there's just still the bottom line is there's not enough inventory. Um, you got like I said, you got 36, 37 million people out there holding on to their loans that are two and a half, three, three and a half percent. And, um, you know, we've seen um, just jockeying back and forth, you know, rates get up to low sevens, demand kind of slides off a little bit then, but now we're in the, you know, the you know, low sixes on the 30 year fix, like Jackie had said, five, I'm, I'm actually um, looking at doing a buy down for somebody uh, on FHA at 4.875. And wow. um, so, uh, you know, I just think this is going to be a year of muddling. The next, you know, everybody's looking for some type of break in the news. Obviously, we saw the Silicon Valley Bank. You know, there's probably, look at it, there's probably more news under behind the curtain there. Probably, I think that's not the only one. But that was kind of an event that kind of came and went for the most part, it seems like. You know, you, you look at that, how big it was for about a week and a half. But then it's just kind of just, we keep moving along. And... Um, you know, if we do see rates come down further, you know, you're going to see demand pick up. So I think it just could be more of the same. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't give, you know, create a clickbait for us. You know, it makes for a boring market, but it seems like it's more balanced, at least, you know, not as crazy like it was in 2021. But um, it's just tight. Things are just tight. Well, I'm seeing activity pick up this month on my end. Um, I'm seeing a lot more inquiries. I'm seeing uh, um, um, some little bit more listing activity. And when I look at the uh, seven-day moving average here, uh, see if I can move this over. I'm going to move this to the bottom here. 
Um, and I'm going to have to pull this off a second. So see right here, the, the yellow line of homes going under contract. Well, new listings actually went up a little bit. And as you can see on the scroll down there on the bottom, that the difference is now 500 units versus where we've been rocking and rolling about 300 units. But um, that's not very significant. It's uh, um, kind of, oh, what do I want to say? Barely moving. So I think we're going to see uh, that May, April and May, for the most part, it's going to be pretty good. Now, one of the things I did see today that I want to share with everybody was I got this from the Cranford market, and I've circled them in red, and Ruby popped off. She's There she is. Now she's back. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, Ruby. So you can tell us that you took a bathroom break. It's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it says here, I only circled two key things. Closings were down 30.8% from March 22, but up 30 three percent in february so the videos that are out there that are saying that we're really slow compared to last year they're absolutely right but it doesn't mean that things are bleak and i think that's the picture they're trying to say but they're leaving this part out new home sales count was up nine percent from last march so think about that resale was down 30 percent but new home sales where all those homes are going to be vacant and nobody's ever going to move into them are up nine percent and up 40 percent from a month ago from february wow those are staggering numbers yeah they are and uh so you know they do have a a little commentary here that says what we've witnessed in the past 12 months is not a crash but a normal correction taking out the over exuberance especially the abnormal demand from over optimistic eye buyers yep and uh and institutional investors so so you know that that part of the market is gone so when you say that we're down like 40 percent you have to keep in mind that last february march open door was buying like a drunken sailor and uh so yeah i got a, i got an fha one that's listed right now that's uh gentleman's going after it put a contract he got it offered he uh got the offer accepted 360. i think the open door uh they're taking a hundred thousand dollar hit on it they bought it at 460. Wow. I thought, well, well, what was their listing price though? They bought it at 460. What was their asking price? Uh no, I think that was their I'll go back to the numbers. I you know, I yeah, it'd be interesting it. to see because I haven't seen them um give up much from their listing price now as they had to when they were forced to before. Yeah. The other thing I'm noticing here is take a look at the uh listings canceled. It's way down here. So people are not giving up. So, you know, in relation I the rest of them. I do think we'll get more buyers. I think if the rates come down, because I've had some people inquire that I were not was not expecting them to call me that are all of a sudden asking for the value of their home, asking me if they think it's a good time to sell. Um, and it's surprising because it's not, um, it, it's people just switching residences here, whether they're moving up or moving down uh, or just flat out moving. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm getting more inquiries on people wanting to know, to know the value. I think that they're hearing it finally that, hey, if you're a seller, this is a good time to list your home. And so if you are, you should, because, it, you know, we need the inventory. And depending on the part of town that you're in, there are areas that we're seeing multiple offers and slightly over list price, even without the concessions. So it's it's a much more balanced market if we could get some more inventory keep growing by 500 listings for the next month or two every week i think we'd be in good shape it'd be a more balanced market well if people start looking at the current news instead of looking at the news that says how bad we are compared to last year and i pulled up this number here and you can see this is sales here right draw a red line over here i mean definitely sales are way down you have to go to 2015 to see that kind of low volume again, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's going to continue to do this because we're seeing everything come up now in February, March, and April. So I think that downward descent is is gone. But, uh, Pat, what can you tell us about rates today um, or this week? <laughs> this week. Now, we uh... – you know, today was pretty quiet. I mean, the ADP numbers came out. I mean, they only showed 142,000 jobs, but it shows that there's obviously sectors that are slowing. Um, 
you know, it's, they said ADP said that the March payroll data is, you know, is one, there's several signals that this says the economy is slowing, employers are pulling back, uh, but there seems like there's still a disconnect between the ADP numbers and the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the you know, market. I mean, um, so, I mean, right now, I mean, yields, you know, Barry feels that yields right now, we had the 10 year treasury at 330 and we saw a peak. This is the six month. Uh, these are rates. Actually, we saw four in March this is going back the year. Um, you know, it just seems like we're kind of in this range. We saw a peak back in uh, October, you know, when you saw the 10 year hit 430. And then obviously in March, we saw it hit 406. I think we've got a ceiling here on the 10 year treasury. And, um, you know, obviously the trend is downward now. And he says the yields, you know, might, there's this next line is 321. That's the next uh, uh, floor on the 10 year treasury. So, you know, we, this market always trades out where you create, you know, ceilings and floors and you get kind of, we've been stuck in these ranges, you know, every, oh, every, every two or three weeks, we have something kind of going on. You can see how it just kind of gyrates, you know, we hit a peak and then we come back down. We hit a peak, short term peak and come back down. So right now, with the numbers that we're seeing out there, I mean, we got the Friday, we got the job report coming out Friday. And then next week we got the CPI number, which is going to be interesting to see. That comes out Tuesday. So, um, you know, like I said, it only seems like about a few weeks ago that the 30 year fix was, you know, up towards 7 percent. And then now it's at around the low sixes just a few weeks later. So, um it's you know, and you see well, demand a lot going pick on up. in the background too. When you look at the Fed balance sheet, I mean, it's increased by four hundred billion dollars, not because they increased quantitative easing, but because the the banks are essentially borrowing from the Feds to increase their liquidity to keep from freezing up. And uh, so, if I mean, it, it's looking more and more that if interest rates are go up, we'd have more banking problems. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, that's obviously what created part of that. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of behind the scenes, probably, you know, trying to, <laughs> the water's coming in and they're trying to dig, you know, trying to bail the water out. So yep. behind the scenes. So, you know, it's, it seems quiet, you know, when news comes out, nothing's been really reactive. You know, we have, you know, in the last year, we've had these wild gyrations where the market's down, you know, 60, 70 basis points, 80 basis points. We're kind of, we're kind of at this, uh, Neutral zone is kind of muddling along. Um, who knows what the next? Obviously, nobody's got crystal ball. But Barry says that I the rents over there, <laughs> the rents. Uh, <laughs> to show off. He didn't. You want to show it off? No. Um, I do yeah. want to show off my new uh, price mortgage jacket, though. That is really nice. You know, the show just kind of has a glow to it. it it's got a pop now, doesn't it? Pops. <laughs> yeah. It just you it know. Pops. I've been, I was trying I've been to figure of... out what was different, and. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, one, you're this not is new. This is a new apparel. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to show this off to the millions of viewers that we have. Millions but, um, and millions. And you too can get one for $29.99. But um, no, so it's been, you know, it just seems like we get demand. You know, people, like you said, I mean, if I can, you know, it's amazing how when I run the numbers, somebody has seven and a quarter. And then, you know, they're, I locked uh, this gentleman the other day, you know, I was, it was looking high sixes, but I waited. I mean, for the, for David, I waited. It was high sixes, but then I locked him at six and three eighths, which is something like that, but it's 100, 100 plus, $125 a month difference. It helps. So, well, ladies, yeah. you're going to like this next yeah, article. Uh, what's that, Ruby? Uh, just every what? dollar helps every buyer. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Especially now we think gas is going to come up. So look at this headline. Now, this got a little bit of a surprise in it. Jackie, I think you'll like this the most. Rental market bust just around the corner. Experts warn. <laughs> I gave you your first clue right there. Because. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Collapse for the U.S. rental market is just around the corner. Some real estate experts warn. In a recent in a series of recent tweets, Nick Gurley, the CEO and founder of Reventure Consulting, predicted that the rental market may face a downturn. He Now he's a real estate expert, huh? <laughs> so, um, it goes on to quote other 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 places. They, and they've got some decent uh, data in behind there. There's, uh, But I did find um, over here, this is uh, from apartmentlist.com. 
and it's showing it. I know it's kind of hard to read there. I'm going to see if I can bump this up a hair. But the, these are the top annual rent change among 100 largest cities. And you got Scottsdale down 5.4, Mesa down 4.1. Thank God. So, but this, yeah. And, and but this, this goes is, back, just to jump in quick, this goes, remember, <laughs> Barry Habib has said that the rents uh, are starting to slow. And but the Fed is looking still at old data. This go that those numbers go exactly what Barry was saying. Yeah, we're seeing it here. But you know, to say that we're gonna and I think uh, if I read it right, uh, they made a comment that we're gonna get down to almost pre-pandemic levels. Not a chance. Mm. I mean, do you think rent's gonna go down to here? No, no. no. But I no. do think I we're gonna have a lot more rental opportunities. And mm -hmm. even the investors that I'm talking, because I've got a lot of investors reaching out to me again, but they're all for fix and flips. They're not for buy and holds anymore. Oh, and, same here. My phone's blowing up. Uh, yep. And I think um, I think the rental market is going to go down some because there's so many there's so many apartment complexes being built. There are so many rent to own communities being built. Mm -hmm. And thank God, because the rents do need to come down. It was astronomical. I mean, $5,000 for a two-bedroom, two-bath in Scottsdale? That's yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah, I've seen uh, two developments that are coming in. One's going to be the Paradise Valley Mall. They're going to put uh, apartments above retail. And mm -hmm. then also um, uh, Metro Center Mall area. And I think uh, Chris Town. But there's a huge luxury rental complex coming in at power road and Elliott uh, that is finally, looks like it might get approval from the city planners. And uh, uh, that's, you know, Gilbert's going to get oversaturated here. So, you know, they, they said that nationally the vacancy rate is now 7.9%. It was rolling about four. Yeah. So you start well, getting up seven, 8%, you're going to get downward pressure on rental prices. Well, here's the other thing too. The other factor that plays into it, we get rates back into the fives. Those people that have been forced to rent because they were up at 7% and they couldn't qualify. Those people are going to want to become homeowners, not mm -hmm. renters. So yep. we're going to see people leaving the rental market, hopefully, which, you know, you need to own if you can, that's how you build long-term wealth. So. Well, I did have a, have a uh, viewer, reach out to me from Anthem and said, what's the rental market up here? Like, cause I, I'm, I would like to get out of this lease. So he's going to try and get somebody to come in and take over his lease. But I looked it up. They had 47 homes for rent up there and get this 27 of them were Airbnbs. Wow. I didn't know that the Anthem had that strong of an Airbnb market, but I looked up, but I didn't either. 47. Wow. That's a lot. And you look and you know, on the MLS, you can tell it's an Airbnb because they give you a price range. Like mm -hmm. thirteen hundred yeah. to twenty five hundred and uh, or thirty five hundred. So, I said, yeah, I would consider that a strong rental market, especially since people are locating there, working on the uh, Taiwan chip plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. same with down in Chandler; those are going to remain strong rental markets because, in a lot of cases, um, you know, they're not going to buy because they're just here to build the thing and then get out of town. So, we'll see what happens. But I think. Um, CPI comes out what next week, Pat? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Tuesday. Oh, yep. let's strap in for that. The markets are closed on on Friday, so we'll come back in and we'll see. And like I say, I want to. I, I think you're going to see people finally start to see numbers that are coming from February here, uh, real soon. We'll see March, you know, but about 20th of April or so, and maybe the word will start getting out that it's not as gloom as gloomy as it is. And, and I know I repeat myself, I, I don't want to see the market heat up, but our listing success rate is still flatline, but it's really decent. It's sitting there at 79% and it's not budging. So the people that are listing are selling their homes. So that's uh, what's going on today. If the wheels fall off the wagon, things could change. If there's any more bright banking crises, we shall see. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of the week and a good weekend. And Pat, you probably have Friday off, right? Mm -mm, no, half a day. Oh, okay. But I'm still going to work. So, yeah. All right. Well, good. Then you won't get a sunburn. So, yep. <laughs> All right. All righty. See you, everybody. Take care, everybody. See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.